Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today we are going to take a look at Google. I guess technically it's Alphabet now, uh, but I've just never really gotten used to that name. So for me, it's still Google. I think this stock is interesting because its digital advertising revenues drive significant earnings and free cash flow today, and they continue to grow. Plus, it's got several other bets, such as self-driving cars, which have the potential to be massive businesses if successful. So in this video, I'm going to summarize some key points to consider for an investment in Google and run through the bull, base, and bear case scenarios. But let's jump into it. So here's an overview of uh, the last five years of trading for Alphabet. I've chosen the ticker uh, Google, G-O-O-G-L, uh, which are the class uh, A shares. There's also G-O-O-G, which are the class C shares. Um, and you can see over the past five years, it's been a pretty steady climb up from about 500 and change five years ago to a little over a thousand dollars today uh reached a high of close to 1250 in the summer of last year uh, before we sort of had the fall off that hit the fangs pretty heavy uh late last year and stocks bounced back a little bit in early 2019. in terms of valuation the uh, company earned close to 44 dollars per share in 2018 it trades at a pe of 25.6 times and if you back out about $100 billion or so that they've got in cash, the cash adjusted PE, which I think is probably the, the more appropriate number to look at, is 22.1 times. So about 22 times earnings um, uh, for Google. Last thing I'll note here is the uh, company does not currently pay a dividend. And so an investment in Google, all of your, all of your returns are gonna be driven by um, your exit price. So there's no dividend along the way. So with that, why don't we jump in to an overview of the financial results as well as uh, recent results and considerations. So I'll open up the annual report here. And why don't we start with the five-year uh, financial overview. Again, pretty clean, nice growth. You can see revenues increasing from 66 billion in 2014 to 137 billion in 2018. So pretty much a double. You can also see their net income going from 14 billion to 30 billion, again, a double. And the same thing if we go down to diluted, uh, diluted earnings, um, you can see here going from about uh, $20 a share to a little over 40. Uh, so a double again. Uh, so revenues doubled, earnings have doubled, uh, the stock prices we saw on the previous slide have doubled. Employees, uh, while not on the page here, have, have also doubled. Uh, so you, you're starting to see a bit of a trend here. They had about 50,000 employees back in 2013-14, and that's grown to about 100,000 as at the end of 2018. Uh, so the headcount at Google has expanded uh, alongside the growth. A couple of other quick things we'll look at in the financial summary is, well, we mentioned it before. Why don't we just jump down here quickly? and show you the cash balance. So you can see the cash and marketable securities balance has grown to over 100 billion uh, as at the end of 2018. I want to quickly look at the cash flow statement. I believe that's on page 53. And just take a look at the, so you've got your net income here. See how that translates into uh, cash flow from operating activities. And then another significant item that they talk about is their CapEx or purchases of property and equipment. They've been investing a lot in data centers, similar to Facebook, um, uh, potentially for different reasons. Obviously, they, they need a large infrastructure themselves, but are also trying to grow out a uh, cloud offering. Uh, so you can see CapEx grow from 10 billion in what year is that, 2016 to about 25 billion. Uh, in, in 2018. So pretty significant investment uh, from Google on the CapEx side. And then lastly, just the income statement, take a quick peek at that. So here, 
very clean income statement. Um, they don't really break out their other bets, as we'll find out a little bit later. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But essentially, you've got your revenues. They've got their direct costs, which will include TAC or traffic acquisition cost. You've got their R&D, which you can see has grown um, in dollars. Sales and marketing, uh, the G&A. And then I love this. Uh, I find this hilarious that they've broken out the European Commission fines as a separate line item on their income statement. I don't know if that means that uh, they expect that to be a uh, an annual an annual item, but I found that uh, reasonably entertaining. Again, so just pretty clean income statement. So with that, why don't we talk do a bit more of a detailed review and, and talk about a couple of key items that I just want to bring up. And why don't we start with governance? So on page 22 of their annual report, or their 10K, they highlight this as a, as a key risk. The concentration of our stock ownership limits our stockholders' ability to influence corporate matters. And really what they talk about is the voting structure here. So you've got three different classes of shares, the A's, the B's, and the C's. The A's have one vote per share, and that's the ticker Google, G-O-O-G-L. The B's have 10 votes per share, and, and those are the shares that are largely controlled by the founders, Larry, Sergey, and, and of course, Eric. Um, so they've controlled 93% of the B shares, uh, which represents approximately 56.5% of the voting power. And then lastly, you've got uh, the Class C shares, which have no voting rights. And so just something to consider, again, if you're looking at an investment in Google, um, the company is controlled uh, largely by the founders. And if you were to invest, you'd have the choice between the A shares, which carry one vote each, or the C shares, which carry no votes each. And that brings us into the next, the next point, uh, which is that they say this in every... Every annual report, so I'm just finding my spot here. Right up front in their annual reports, they quote, Google is not a conventional company. We do not intend to become one. Uh, and so I think that's important, important to be aware of as an investor. I mean, they do not manage the business uh, for Wall Street, and they don't have to uh, because they've, they've got a controlling stake of the votes. And... They talk about moonshots just a little bit down the page. And when they talk about this, it rings true with the way that they've managed the business. Many companies get comfortable doing what they've always done, making only incremental changes. This incrementalism leads to irrelevance over time, especially in technology, yada, yada, yada. People thought we were crazy when we acquired YouTube and Android and when we launched Chrome. Those efforts have matured into major platforms. And we will not shy away from high risk high reward projects that we believe in because they are the key to our long-term success. So I think that's important to know as an investor, when you think about their self-driving car division, when you think about years ago when they had people driving around the mapping out the world essentially on Google Maps, these are the types of projects that uh, that Google Google's founders um, will undertake. And so as an investor, um, you know, they're the ones that control the business. They're the ones that are, um, going to be managing the business in this in this manner and so far it's it's worked out really well for investors so but just keep that in mind so that's government uh governance sorry segments and the value of other bets is the next thing that i'll talk about so if we go to page 29 segments. So here it talks about, they essentially, they break out, excuse me, Google, and then other bets. And here's a quick snapshot of Google, obviously, the uh, large, extremely heavy driver of revenues here to the tune of 99 plus percent. Uh, but they do discuss what's in Google. So Google includes our main products such as ads, Android, Chrome, Google Cloud, Google Maps, Google Play, hardware, including Next, Nest, Nest, Search, and YouTube. 
So where I'm going, going at here is there's really minimal disclosure down to the individual business line. They group all of their more mature businesses under Google. They provide some disclosure, but it's really tough to get an accurate view as to how, for example, YouTube's performing or how much revenue is Google Maps generating. Um, they group all of these businesses together and then their other bets are sort of their less mature uh, uh, business segments that aren't individually material. And here's where we'll find Waymo um, amongst others. And when we talk about some of their other bets, I mean, you know, in the market, people discuss how much would their autonomous driving division be worth? Um, and, you know, if you ask me, the truth is I have absolutely no idea, uh, no clue. If you look at the revenues generated by their entirety of other bets, it's really insignificant as it relates to Google today. What I do know is that uh, Alphabet is spending money. And so the current earnings are depressed. So if you think about, uh, their income statement for 2018, there's a lot of costs that are funding these other bet initiatives that aren't driving revenue today. So their earnings per share of about $44 is actually understated uh, relative to um, what it would be if they weren't if they weren't undertaking these other bets. So that's sort of the way that that I think about it. Of course, autonomous driving, you know. Assuming it, it can be successful, there's a huge total addressable market or TAM. So there could be a huge opportunity there. I have no, I have no way of quantifying that. Cost is uh, the next thing that I want to talk about. And we're going to talk about traffic acquisition cost and R&D. So why don't we go to page 35. It's one of their largest expenses at, at Google is the cost of acquiring the traffic. And some of their traffic comes to them from their own properties and costs nothing to very little to generate. Other traffic, um, for example, YouTube partners or other websites that use Google ad advertising, they pay a larger percentage. Uh, they pay a share of the advertising revenue to, um, uh, to their partners. And so if you look at the TAC, you can see that it's actually gone up as a percentage of revenue overall. So you can see um, as a percentage of total advertising revenue, TAC was 21.2% in 2016, and that's grown to 23% in 2018. And Google does go on to say, there we go. The increase in TAC to distribution partners was a result of increase in Google properties revenue and associated TAC rate. The increase in Google properties TAC rate was driven by changes in partner agreements and the ongoing shift to mobile. So one thing that if you, you go into the conference call transcript, which we won't do in the video today, but I was reading through it. You know, Google very much guides investors to that tax rate increasing over time. So part of that is the increased drive and shift to mobile traffic where they need to um, more mobile searches are channeled through paid access points. So they need to pay a little bit more for the mo for the mobile traffic. Um, and just also, I think as they're um, using more and more partners, just think about YouTube and all the content that's created on YouTube that, uh, um, you know, they need to comp compensate those content creators uh, as opposed to just uh, traffic that's landing on, on their properties. So that's the TAC. Um, and then the last one we talked about it briefly, but is R&D. So we just jump forward here, page research and development. I just wanted to highlight the sheer magnitude of the dollars. They're investing roughly 15% of revenues um, into R&D. And as of 2018, that was $21 billion of research and development. Again, that's flowing through um, the income statement. So that's the, that's the quick sort of financial and considerations review. Now what I wanna do 
is um, just look at some key considerations for the stock. So if you're thinking about an investment in Google, what are some of the strengths? Well, we've got a dominant search platform with tailwinds in core advertising business. It's got really nice tailwinds that have basically driven 20% plus, plus growth for years. I mean, that, that's incredible. Um, you've also got significant investment in R&D as we just talked about, you know, 20 billion last year of, of P&L costs flowing into R&D. In my view, that delivers differentiated IP. So think about their, their Google Maps Think about their artificial intelligence and big data. I mean, I think Google is really positioning themselves as a company um, it, that's ahead of their peers. It'd be pretty difficult to catch up given the amount of spending. They've got 100,000 employees spending $20 billion a year. Uh, they've had a head start um, relative to many of their, their competitors. And so, you know, I think it's fair to say that one of their strengths is, is uh, all the differentiated IP that they're building. And that kind of lands on the, the last one, which is the ecosystem. If you look at the number of products that, that Google offers, it goes from hardware. I mean, they've got the Android mobile phones as well as some tablets and, and uh, laptops. Uh, right on through to all of their, their software products, their search, uh, the maps and the cloud offering. I mean, they really do touch uh, uh, an incredible number of different businesses across the tech landscape. And the more that you use, almost like comparing them to the Apple ecosystem, you know, when you, if you do start using the Android ecosystem and Google's products, Google Map, Google Search, you've got YouTube, you can really get tied in. What are the risks? Well, it's highly competitive. Uh, digital advertising business is lucrative and uh, there are many others that are going after it. Uh, Facebook would be a key competitor for, for advertising dollars, as we know. Second key risk is regulatory. Um, you know, could there be regulation added to Google's business? Uh, breakup of the businesses, potentially. Um, you know, these Google and some of their peers are extremely large companies now on a global scale, um, and they've got the eyes of the politicians. And part and parcel of that is privacy and security and the protection of customer data. And um, that is, that's an area where, you know, I have no clue, I'm not an expert, uh, but we know that for their business model to be successful, they need to uh, have their customers believe that their data is secure and safe. And another risk is there's no dividend. So again, here, all of your returns are going to be based on the future selling price for the shares. Key drivers, uh, key drivers for the stock, really simple. Advertising dollars continued shift to online. That's been a tailwind for years. It, it looks like uh, that's going to continue. Um, and then as long as Google can get their share of those advertising dollars, <clears throat> that will be a real tailwind for them. Operating margins or uh, traffic acquisition costs will be another key driver uh, to watch that over time. Again, that 21% up to 23% and just watching how that trends uh, higher over time could be a headwind to overall profitability. And lastly, the success in the other bets. Um, and cloud I've got here, it's not another bet. It's, it's now uh, looped into the Google results, but all of their newer businesses that still have a lot of runway, uh, how successful are they going to be at monetizing those businesses? And that could, given given the addressable market, it those businesses do have the ability to be material over time for Google. So those are the key the key considerations. So why don't we why don't we talk about an illustrative bull there and base case scenario? And again, this is just one way of looking at it. Fairly simple, but just to think about the stock and the different scenarios and and what the implied share prices might be in, in certain scenarios. So let's start off with the bull scenario. The bull scenario is that advertising growth continues 20% plus per year, which is essentially what it's been for the last five years. So we, we continue to have really strong tailwinds, uh, driving 20% plus EPS growth. Other bets pay off. Now, I haven't quantified that here, but assuming that their other bets begin to get traction, maybe it's uh, autonomous driving, 
um, but some of their business ventures start to um, start to really show meaningful either traction or contribution. And what do you get here? Well, I've, I've taken 30 times earnings of uh, $55 per share plus the net cash, and that gets you an implied share price of about $1,800 or 60% higher than current levels. The base case, let's say advertising growth continues, but it's 15 to 20%. Um, so still incredibly strong. Um, but the growth, you know, just the law of high numbers now that their revenue is 130 billion plus, um, the growth moderates a little bit. Continued investment in other bets, maybe, maybe no material payoffs to report. Um, and what I've done here is just look and, looked at $50 of earnings per share, and I've taken a multiple of 25. So 25 times $50 of earnings plus net cash gets you to an implied share price of $1,400, $1,405, which is up about 25% um, from uh, today's share price. Important to note this $50 EPS, um, the current street consensus, I believe for 2019 is around 47. Um, so just to give you, um, these are these are round numbers just for illustrative purposes, but if you were looking at 2019 from the street, it's uh, $47. Now the bear case scenario, let's assume advertising growth really slows down and it's zero to 10% earnings growth and that other bets do not deliver. Now, first thing, I mean, the most extreme bear scenario is that uh, the base business or the advertising revenue turns negative. I find that difficult to see, at least in the near term. I think there's enough, uh, enough tailwinds to uh, allow that to continue. So I've, you know, my bear case scenario here is zero to 10% growth. When we think about other bets not delivering, I think this is a key part of uh, the bear scenario I've come up with is that the company is spending so much today on these other bets, R&D, um, to drive the future growth of the business that they could easily, you know, if the growth isn't there and there's no line of sight to these other bets becoming material, i.e. if they're failing, um, Google could easily pull back in the other bets spending for illustrative purposes. I'm thinking five to 10 billion, you know, from a review of the PL, you can see there's billions and billions of dollars uh, that are being spent on both R and D and costs related to employees that are presumably many of them are related to the other bets. So I think there's a lot of potential for pullbacks spending. I've just, again, sort of earmarked, call it five to 10 billion, which then results in, uh, a higher earnings per share number than what the business is producing today, but obviously a lower multiple because the growth isn't there. So I've looked at 16 times $55 earnings per share plus net cash, and that gets you an implied share price of a little over $1,000. So call it maybe 10% downside from, from where we are today. So that's um, that's my video for Google, let me know what you think, which scenario is most likely, have I missed anything, or do you have a different take? Uh, that's a wrap. Check us out at ostrichinvesting.com or on Twitter at ostrich underscore invest. We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing, and don't bury your head in the sand.